Nice to meet you. Uh, Fiction, as you are five minutes Nice. Ty. Thank you. Got it from Texas Frightmare. <laughs> what is it? It's a uh, kind of like a horror convention. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you, that's your big thing. You love horror. I. They were kind of my babysitters growing up. Have you seen Don't Look Now? I haven't seen that. You have not? I have not. There's too, too many good stuff out there. I know, but that's like a must. Uh, I'll get it. You give I'll, me I'll, I'll put it higher. Sure you get it. <laughs> There's so many great film references in here and all the films that you recreate in the film, but what are some films nowadays that you think are going to inspire the next generation of filmmakers? Because a lot of those films in there, like 400 Blows, kind of inspire me. So what do you think are the next films that are going to do that? Um, there's so many films to, to, to choose from and to and young filmmakers. Uh, um, it's a, it's a hard question because uh, I've been so focused, I've been buried in this for a while, but um, you know, just, I'm just going back to uh, Sundance, I saw Sean Baker's Tangerine, which I thought was really uh, original. Yeah, really it's original. gonna play here. Yeah, I thought, when I saw that movie, I was just, this is such an original voice. I was, it was really humbling. Um, and then um, I saw Kenny Rich's movie that I thought was great. I'm forgetting the title, like Strongest Man on Earth or something like that. Um, Dope, I thought it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back to this because I felt like I was a part of a community that was so humbling that I didn't. That's why I was so surprised that we had got these awards because there's so many incredible films uh, playing there. Uh, I saw. Uh, I, I'm forgetting because I wasn't expecting the question, but I should. I was. Uh, I saw a lot of films at the festival that uh, I, I didn't see as many as I wanted to um, because because of this. But but uh, I was so humbled by all the original voices and the fact mm -hmm. that we were all trying to say something together. Yeah. A uh, great documentary called Finders Keepers. So, um, uh, Ma Mommy, Mama by the, by the French Canadian yeah. filmmaker. Yeah, uh, there's just too many films. And, and plus, I'm not even thinking of other countries right yeah. now. But uh, there are a lot of Mexican filmmakers that are, uh, Fernando, M. Kiss, I think he, he did uh, that, one, that movie about the Mennonites. There's a lot, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. much more talented than, sure. than me. Yeah, and I, I love that this movie takes place in high school because I feel like uh, things happen to you in high school that kind of stick with you yeah. for forever. Forever. Especially for the characters in this film. And yeah. so what were some of those things for you that kind of stuck with you throughout all that? High school? Yeah. It was hard. It's so funny. My sister said, "Oh, you're in Dallas," and, and someone had said, oh, "You should meet." Someone had recommended that I see this this acquaintance of hers from, from high school that is that had moved to Dallas. And she goes, "If you do that, I will never t I will never talk to you again." She was a mean girl to my sister. <laughs> 1988. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't. You never forget those moments because they they do shape you. These are a very critical point in your life when you're starting to get to know who you are, what you're made of, that you have ideas and. And as, as if you're an artist, you're a bit of an outsider, and you're quiet, and you're shy, and you're weird, and you're drawing all the time. And then I was diving into movies. But the, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of the feeling that you have friends and that you lose them all mm -hmm. because they become popular and you don't. And that feeling of exclusion is very isolating. Of course, that feeling of exclusion led you to movies, to hide in movies and discover life through the movies. And then finding, and then getting reacquainted with them as you become to get hold of the, the person that you think you are or the, the kind of things you wanted to do, when it's a bit of a far out idea in Laredo in the late 80s, it is kind of a far out idea that you wanted to do this. Um, and then getting them back, but, um, but that, I think that feeling of isolation, of, of, of being ostracized, I guess, in some ways, uh, because you weren't as popular, that's, that's, that's traumatic when you're that age, you know? You deal with it, you can deal with it as, as you get older, but it is uh, sometimes not being invited. You know, I think it's funny, because everything I say will always lead to Scorsese. He has a saying about uh, the age of innocence, that is, it, it, it's his most vi violent movie. Yeah. Because they don't, kill, they don't kill you with a gun. They eradicate you from society, but not right. inviting you to a party. Yeah. Those feelings when you're young, when you're a certain age, and you want to be accepted, you want to be, you want to have friends, you want to meet girls, and when you are eradicated from a party or something like that, it's it's something that stays with you forever, and it's because um, you weren't that guy. Yeah. Um, but all that eventually finds its way into the opening of Earl, and and or understanding Greg, mm -hmm. you know, so then you can you can bring something to it. I'm not just, you know, shooting something because it's going to look pretty. 
You want it to be look like a prison. You want it to feel right. terrifying. You want it to be in the salt. You want to hide. You want to light it with fluorescence. You know, yeah. and then and then have that the softness later of or of Greg's of uh, sorry of Rachel's world kind of find right. its way in. Yeah, I love that you had that Mean Streets poster in of the background. Of course, you can. Cut that. Yeah. There's no, there's, there isn't life without that. Yeah, cool. Well, I think we're out. That's of time. it. Oh, yeah. Did I talk too much? All right. Thanks. Thanks. I know.